Electrical accidents in the workplace can result in a wide variety of outcomes, including damage to plant, equipment, machinery, and appliances. And of course, electricity can cause fires and explosions. But the most important outcome is the potential for injury and death, either as a direct or indirect result of an electric shock or an electrical fault. Electricity travels through materials which are called conductors. Good examples being silver, copper, and aluminum. Most metals are good conductors. The human body is also a good conductor. Electricity will not travel easily through materials we call insulators. Good examples of insulators include PVC, rubber, dry wood, and glass. Appropriate insulators, which form parts of electrical installations, for all intents and purposes, stop the flow of electricity. Good conductors are said to have a low resistance to electrical flow, and good insulators have a high resistance. This resistance is measured in ohms. There are two other terms that we need to be familiar with, voltage and current. Voltage is a measure of pressure, a good analogy to help us understand this is water in a hose with the nozzle turned off. We have water pressure, but no movement. Current, as the name suggests, is a measure of the rate of flow. Again, a good analogy is a water hose with the nozzle open. Here we have water flowing in the hose. That is, we have current. Electrical current is measured in amperes, we can calculate the current flowing in a particular circuit if we know the voltage and the total resistance. 